Today we continue our series where each week we've been looking at a fundamental truth. And I'm going to start with this thought that Jesus is said to be the author and finisher of our faith. And the purpose of us doing this is to provide a basis for you on what is essential for your life. My name is Jim Wallace. I'm on staff at Crossroads International Church in South Outerwear, Mass. And this week we're going to look at number three, the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we'll look over this fundamental truth, this specific one, for probably the next two weeks. Today, we simply want to exchange some of uh, his attributes of his virgin birth and also his sinless life. And I love the fact that God's timing is amazing, that this devotion falls in the very week we celebrate the birth of Jesus with Christmas. And with this great story, of course, with such historical significance, also has a story of relationships as well. And the entire story starts out with a teenager. Her name was Mary, and Mary was born in a very poor family from this very insignificant town of Nazareth. Maybe you can relate to that, and if you're from a town like me, maybe I was, an insignificant little town like I was in somewhere down New Jersey, and of course, Mary's from Nazareth. She didn't appear to stand out from her peers and would probably not have been voted most likely to succeed. Eventually, however, she was engaged to a man named Joseph who would would not promise her affluence, but not promise her wealth, and not promise her these, this great estate. But he was a kind man, and he had a stable reputation and a good trade. While Mary was growing up, unknown by the outside world, God had noticed her. He had taken note of her, and it is said he was delighted. And one day, to Mary's astonishment, God's messenger Gabriel, an angel, appeared to her and said, Greetings, greetings favored one. The Lord is with you. Do not be afraid, for you have found favor with God. The angel proceeded to tell her that she would conceive and give birth as a virgin to the Son of God himself. And instead of recoiling in terror or objectingly, stubbornly, you know, rejecting this outright, Mary submitted and admitted and completely accepted to this pregnancy as was described to her. And she had known she would be the ridicule, she would be the full of accusations, the ugliest of, of things. And the doctrine of the virgin birth is crucially important because it's found in Isaiah 7.14. It's of course documented in Matthew and Luke. And first let's look at how scripture describes the event. And in Mary's question, as it says in Luke 134, says, how will this be as I'm a virgin? And Gabriel responds to that with this, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. The angel encouraged Joseph not to fear Mary with these words, what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. So Joseph also is, is, is told about this. And Matthew further states that the virgin was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Galatians 4.4 4 teaches, written by Paul, God sent his son born of a woman. Notice it's born of a woman, not conceived by a man or a woman. From these passages, we certainly can clearly see Jesus' birth was of the Holy Spirit working within Mary's body. The immaterial, the spirit, and the material, Mary's womb, were both involved. Mary, of course, would, could not impregnate herself, and in that sense, she was simply a vessel. Only God can perform this miracle of this incarnation. However, denying a physical connection between Mary and Jesus would imply that Jesus was not truly human. Scripture teaches that Jesus was fully human, with a physical body just like yours and just like mine. Then he, this is received for Mary, and at the same time Jesus was fully God, he was an eternal sinless nature. He was born not of sin that is he had no sinful nature hebrews 7 26 it it would seem that the sin nature is passed down from generation through generation through the man romans 5 12 17 and 19 the virgin birth circumvented the transmission of the sinful nature and allowed the eternal god to become a perfect man and Jesus continued to live out his sinful life, and this is important for the reasons it's stated in Hebrews. He is the kind of high priest we need because he's holy and he's blameless, unstained by sin. He has been set apart from sinners and has been given the highest place of honor in heaven. And Peter, who hung out with Jesus, who was one of his closest friends, recorded this in his second letter. He never sinned, 
nor did he deceive anyone. And I can tell you, and I can assure you that Peter was everything that was just in that sentence, who really sinned and deceived a lot of people. He's the, he's, you know, he's just not a great guy. If this is the kind of people Jesus hung out with, and it's ironic that Peter being that person who's cited for this, claimed he never sinned or he deceived, never deceived anyone. As I close out this week for, for the mother who, who might have believed she would have hold a special place in her son's heart, the equality of Jesus' love might have hurt deeply at first. But during this Christmas season, if you are doing, you're not doing it already, can you be like Mary and start to treasure up in your heart your experience with Jesus? Luke records how she treasured up what the shepherds reported to them. She recalled how after losing Jesus and finding him at the temple when he was only 12 years old, obediently learning about the Father, Jesus was likewise obediently to his earthly father. She treasured up this experience in her heart also. The virgin birth and his sinful life were just two attributes for his deity. Next week, join me, won't you, as we continue to look at the fundamental truth of the deity of Jesus by looking at his miracles, his substitutionary work on the cross, his bodily resurrection from the dead, and lastly, his exaltation to the right hand of God. I hope to see you then. Thanks for listening. Godspeed and blessings. Have a great holiday season and Merry Christmas.